designer did you ever know that was on time? All right, there we go. Sweet. Oh, I think that worked. Oh, wait. Is that right? Yeah, it's pretty right. Okay, cool. Thank you very much for coming out. Um, this is my very first, well, it's my first Drupal camp, Drupal organization meeting thing, let alone my very first session. So uh, I'm going to do my best um, and try not to bore you and maybe give you a couple uh, tips or whatnot. Um, I'm pretty much just going to go through my process. Some of it is pretty much ingrained in me uh, after doing this for quite a few years. Um, and I thought that if I kind of put that out there, that'd help. And then hopefully we'll go that, through that pretty fast. And if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. I had really planned to uh, have some uh, kind of images included in the, in the keynote. And I just finished it um, about 97 seconds ago. So um, those won't be in there. But maybe we can like, bring up a couple web pages, and I can show you from that. Uh, to get specific. Um, first off, how many people in here are straight designers? Anybody in here just right, good old designer? Okay, just like designer and then does CSS stuff too. Yeah, designer and CSS. Who does all three? Like designer, I do the CSS and I got it all out. What do those people do? Okay. I belong in the second group. Um, um, I'm really fortunate to have two guys who I work with who are pretty damn great, as you can see by the Drupal campsite, uh, what they do on the dev side. Um, there was a time not too long ago, a few years ago, when um, I had my hands a lot more dirty with code. And then I, you know, I started working with Scott and now Blake, and I got really lazy. So um, I have tried to keep up, or actually I do keep up as much as I can on CSS. Um, I'm a self-taught designer. I came to it from um, an English background, oddly enough. And uh, so um, <clears throat> I might come, come, if you've gone to school, then um, I might do things um, wrong. <laughs> um, or uh, ask backwards, as they say. Um, but it's worked for me. Um, most of the time, things I've learned, I've had to figure out because there was something I had in my head, and I wanted to see it on the screen. And I had to figure out a way to kind of get there. So some of what I'm going to go through is uh, just those things. All right, so this is the first stand. So a little over overview. Uh, we talked about, you know, well, you're from your brain to the internets, you know, wrapping your ideas around Drupal. Um, most of this is going to be the same. If I think, well, I approach Drupal design for the most part um, as I would for normal web design. Um, we do um, development and theming for, uh, for clients, and they provide us comps. And it, it's pretty amazing to me, I think, and I said this earlier, but how there's designers out there that don't think in web. And if you are designing and you design for the web, you have to think in web. And you have to see how your image is going to work um, after it gets out of the Photoshop file. You know, showing up with a background that's you know, 1,200 pixels by 1,800 pixels because it's somebody's big fat face. Um, or they may be gorgeous. I don't know. But that, you know, to make that JPEG look good, it's going to be like 600K. Do you really want that in the background? Or how the stuff overlays that big fat face. Um, using lots of PNGs and transparencies willy-nilly when you know that you're going to have to figure out how to stuff that into IE6, which might work over here with, you know, with the fix. Um, but you know, if you have links, it's a problem. So uh, I'll cover some of those things, um, how I get around that. Um, so these are some of the questions that I ask myself. Um, probably not out loud anymore, but um, it was when I come to design. Like, who's it for? Uh, what's it going to do? How am I going to do it? How's it working? And how can I make it better? So that's the idea to kind of, you know, organize this whole thing. I've used a ridiculous amount of metaphors as I've gone through this, so I hope I don't confuse you too much and maybe even make you laugh once or twice. Who's it for? Well, duh, it's for the client. Um, this is a balancing act, but obviously that's the one that's hopefully you're getting paid from, and hopefully even more so you're getting paid on time. Secondly, think about beyond the client, because usually the client has got customers or is sort of representing him or herself to the outside world. You know, who's the audience? Is it seniors? Is it teens? Is it both? Because if you have seniors, you're going to think about, well, I got big text here, you know, I need big fat buttons. There's going to be that, you know, it's like text increase size maybe twice, so you could end up with like 18-point font in your body text. 
how is that going to flow? If you're doing um, you know, a mini site for the Jonas Brothers, you're not going to have to worry about the seniors so much going to that. So you can do other things too. And you can also make it a little bit more complicated because a 13-year-old is going to be a much more web savvy, or the average 13-year-old, much more web savvy than, let's say, a senior or an, an older audience. And lastly, well, duh, it's also for you because you have to make yourself happy. And that's the balancing act between really the client and yourself. Because good design is going to come when the client's happy and you're happy. That always comes with some compromises. Um, and sometimes you get really lucky and you don't have to compromise and everyone gets happy. Everyone just gets it. Um, all right, so what's it got to do? The function junction between dev and design. Making design the message. So balancing that out. Okay, here's the content. They sell plumbing fixtures. So, I mean, do I want to make my site look like a big giant faucet? Well, no, we did. We did at one time in 1998. It was really cool to have, you know, when people like to really have icons on the buttons instead of having text. But people have become much more sophisticated with how they go through the web. And most people now really kind of want to get in and get out. So you have to present that information and then balance that out too with kind of giving them somewhat of an experience, even if you're just selling plumbing fixtures. It should be really, well, that was the best plumbing selling fixture site I've ever been on. You can do those things. It doesn't have to be um, thinking, well, it's just plumbing fixtures. Who cares? I'd rather be you know, making a site for you too or uh, the Jonas Brothers um, and something really fun and funky. What's the root of the look? Is it come from the logo? Is it come from an image the client gives you? Um, is it from other sites, other competitors? Usually when I'm designing in the very beginning, um, there's something that just locks for me. Um, I really try to uh, communicate with the client if they have a logo uh, to get that to me soon and God help us that it actually looks good. Um, if not, then we push the other side and we say, uh, it would be, what happened? Oh. I gotta plug it in, sorry. Un momento. Yeah. Uh. Thanks. Look at this, it's just like when we work. I break things all the time and the dev guys fix it. It's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, dev guys. <laughs> because, yeah, I know it's no shit. Oh, there's one right there, buddy. Thanks, Blake. Thanks, Blake. Okay. What's the root of the look? Finding that community night with a client. You never know. You might get an upsell. Well, for, for those that just do design on cleaning up that logo. Um, it's really hard. And there's times where I've had to do, like, you know, try to design something that I'm happy with. And they give you a logo that they made in Word. <laughs> and is Times New Roman. And is purple and has a drop shadow. And you fight them, and then you're like, oh, God, what am I going to do? Then you do the best you can after that. Is it yoga, or is it a living statue? Like we talked earlier, you have your site for seniors. That text is going to get bigger. Things are going to change and move around. You have to think about the elasticity of what the, what the site is going to have to have. Or is it something that's going to be static? How much can you get away from that? We had talked earlier uh, in the session this morning about how great Apple's pages look, their internal pages, you know, with the text and the the way that the, they look, they look like pages that you'd see in a magazine. Well, they do that because it's, they're not flowing the text in. It's actually just good old HTML. And when they have a two column layout there and they get to this end, they cut the text or they'll edit the text. So wow, look, it, it lines up right at the bottom. You're flowing text in from Drupal. You're almost never going to get that, particularly when it's up to the client to put text in because you, know, you end up with a 40 word headline or a one word headline or something that's supposed to be a teaser in around 25 words and they put in 250 words and all of a sudden your design goes kaput. So you have to think about those things before you even get to the page. Um, Back to the Future is not just a movie. Think about where the site's going to go. Is the site going to grow? Are, these, are there going to be more pages? What happens if you do this really sweet look nav and at the top where you've got like four big buttons? Um, and then all of a sudden they're like, can we have another, you know, or they come back six months later. Oh, we want to change this, or we'd actually like to add another section here. You're like, oh, 
God, what happens to my design at this point? If I've got to fit this other, this other part in, and it sort of ruins and, and takes away from the balance. So sometimes you know your pages are going to be static. They're going to have five, they launch with five pages, it's going to be five pages, I can do a menu that's going to be five pages and it's okay. If there's something that's going to, you know, if they're going to continue to add pages into the main nav or take them away or even on the side nav, think about those things before you even pick up your pencil or your mouse. Um, exploit your strengths. Um, Again, too, in the morning, we had gone through, I don't know if anybody, how many people made it to the morning session? Anybody for the Drupal camp? One person. Okay. Okay, because some of this stuff went over. And unfortunately, this is one of the things I've shown you. The first camp site comp that I did um, was clean, because I've been trying to challenge myself to do like a super clean site. I don't really do it that well. It's really, really hard. It's totally hard, you know, and the guys out there that can do it well, hats off. For some reason, since I've started in this, I just like to rub dirt on stuff, you know? It's got to have a little bit of a grunge. It's got to have a little bit of, like, organic feel that, I guess, makes me happy. Um, I'm still going to learn. One of these days, I'm going to nail getting a super clean site done and done right. Um, but so we did the first comp, and it just it wasn't us. It really wasn't who we are and what, the, you know, what our backlog is and what our portfolio is. And so I went in and I rubbed some dirt on it, and all of a sudden it became us. That just happens to be my strength. That's what I like to do. That's what appeals to me. Those are the designs I, I you know, get happy at when I look at them off the web. Um, so finding that strength and that balance in your own you know, aesthetic. And it doesn't even matter. Even if you're not um, necessarily a designer, what are the sites you like? And then, you know, borrow from those. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So wait, before you... Before you even open up Photoshop, again, too, thinking about structure, is wireframe. Um, wireframe and then wireframe. Keep going back because that's really going to help you begin to conceptualize where the content's going to go. A lot of times people open up that Photoshop file. First thing they do, all right, let's make the header. And then we'll spend four hours in the header and then just kind of flow the text in on the bottom. And you've seen lots of sites that look like this. If you can start with the whole conception of what the page is supposed to, to, to be and feel, even if you know, you're, you're realizing that people on, you know, on IE6 with 17 sort of you know, um, search bar things stuck in there, they've got about 300 pixels high of page before the fold, you still want to think about the whole page and how it's all going to flow, because they're still going to have to scroll, and how that content's going to work um, against each other and to make the whole. So thinking about that content and placement will actually help your design a lot. All right, so you open Photoshop, and now what, which is more the kind of nitty gritty of the design? Keeping that file organized, because your mom is watching. Now what does that mean? Eventually, or it's very possible, you have your Photoshop file, you have to pass it off to somebody else. And like I said, I've gotten Photoshop files from when we do theming. Wow, they're kind of a big mess. And um, I can say that because I know I've given Photoshop files in the past to people and they said the same thing about me. So at least from CS3 on, I think it was even CS2, you can group things. Um, we can maybe go back and I can show you, in a, I think I've got some on here, how I kind of organize uh, my Photoshop file. Um, I try to do everything really kind of within one file if I can, if I only have a few sub pages. So, you know, I've got a background layer, or, and then I've got that in the background group. And if I do a content on top of that, and then I've got another content for another page, I'll switch and turn off those groups. So that way I'm not creating multiple Photoshop files, which is great if you need to change the background color, because then you don't have to go across six files for all your different pages. You can do it in one file. Again, content is king, so we talked about the wireframing. Again, too, when you open up that Photoshop file, after you've kind of done your little sketches and you've thought about what it looks like, get the content in there. Get dummy content in there, you know, um, using Ipsum Absalom or, um, I don't, yeah, actually, well, that's the one you used. Um, just went right out of my head. Just a second, sorry. Um, um, and then... Figure out your design around that. Again, too, you see that where the header will look nice and then the content just looks like it's kind of just kind of got stuck in there. The whole design, you should think of the design as a whole thing and the content's gonna really help you balance that out. Um, sure, you wanna pick some colors, you wanna get your palette in there if you can, or at least some kind of sketching of ideas. But I found, and this is new for me, I've probably done this more in the last, only in the last year, 
where I've tried to get as, all the content in sort of in the placement on, in, the, in the Photoshop file before I start building out everything around it. Because what I was finding was that I'd spend, here I am, three hours into the comp, and then I finally go in there and I put the rest of the content in, and I'm like, oh, crap, it's not balanced out. And then I'm changing things that had the content been in there, I wouldn't have worked so hard thinking, oh, this doesn't have enough weight to it. Um, but then when you see it balanced out to the content, you're like, oh, actually, the page has some balance. Change is going to come. So think about that Why you are you know, making your Photoshop files. Adjustment layers are great, and raster is for suckers. Do not raster anything if you don't have to. And most of the time, you shouldn't have to. Again, too, hopefully we can get back to that. Um, or actually even take a tutorial. How many people use like adjustment layers? and their Photoshop files, right? Okay, and using masks, right? Great, okay. And even using, you know, color overlay in the, um, um, in the effects thing, which I don't like as much. I'd rather actually usually put a, a colored layer over the top of something and just mask it out with that. Because um, it's great, because then you can go back and your client says, oh, I actually like the design, I'm not crazy about the color. Oh, okay, sure, no, I can make the changes. You go back, and you're, and you're done. Versus if you have a bunch of stuff that's rastered, then you've got to kind of recreate it again, or you've got to do funky things to get the color right. <clears throat> it looks like this here in your Photoshop file, and it looks like there when it gets to the end of on to the web page. And this is also in the details. So um, I'm familiar with, like, there's different font settings. You know, you've got some type in your, in your, in your PSD. You can choose sharp. You can choose crisp. I only noticed that like, what, about two years ago, and I've been using Photoshop for years, and I was like, holy crap, now it looks more like web text. Playing with those things, and you're going to get different effects, and it's going to change the look of your fonts. Also, aligning the pixels and, um, on, your, on your vectors. If you'll notice, there's, um, when you're drawing, this might be really technical and boring, I'm sorry, but uh, when you're drawing, you know, there's a little thing where you can kind of, uh, a little button in the click in the, in the, uh, uh, in the preferences, how you can line up your... Uh, um, so when you're drawing squares and stuff. Anyways, they're pixel perfect, what it, what it means to. And when you look at sites that have like, great finish work, everything has that, that really nice clean edge on it. And that's stuff that should start in your Photoshop file. All right. And so you can't get there from here in tiles because the photo end Photoshop file is really just the beginning of the design. It's not the end because you have to be able to now take what you've done and figure out a way to cut it up and then get it into, well, in this case, Drupal. So you make it on a hole and then you break it apart. This is how I do this. So there's a lot of people that like to have the one big Photoshop file and then they'll kind of just do slices in that one Photoshop file. I try to break out as many elements of that file into little separate files. Um, duplicate layer is an awesome tool for doing this. So I'll click on what I really want. So I want the background in this. I'll click on duplicate layer, open in a new file, and then I can just have that one piece which then I can edit and then export. The great thing about that is instead of going back through and trying to do slices again or different slices again in your main Photoshop file, you're just working on that little piece. It works great also for like titles, you know, if you've got a, like, like a lot of uh, fixed text, text titles, um, adding those in your layers and exporting them out. All right, so now, <clears throat> now you've kind of got your pieces put together, and then you have to think about how to kind of get it into Drupal. So I think of Drupal as sort of like this thing in the middle of the web browser that I have to figure out a way to put something around. Um, <clears throat> div wrappers are your friends. Now I'm going to actually see if this works. I'm going to open this up, and we're going to look at... Actually, can I do this here? That's as long as it goes. Let's try it. Wow, that's really big, isn't it? Okay. Well, this will help a little bit. So you can see I've got actually a quite a few pieces working in this section here. Um, one of the ways that I've got... Let's see, we're not going to, to see that, are we? Okay. I have a wrapper around... The, um, shoot, I'm sorry. And I don't have the file here. Oh, that sucks. Uh, well, I guess just thinking about ways that you can kind of like trick, trick the browser a little bit and then using pieces. The, my biggest trick that I use is honestly is center align 
on background images. So um, let's say you've got, you know, you've got, you've got your web page, you've got um, <clears throat> sort of like a pattern, as you can see here with the waves, right? That would be sort of tricky to line up if I've got objects over the top of that. But I'll make my header, let's say, 960 wide in Photoshop and then have my graphics over the top of that header. And then um, I'll export those, just those wave files without the graphics on the overlay. So then you just have the plain kind of wave graphics. You stick that in the page. It's 960 wide. You center it. And then the Drupal camp and the scheduling thing that you see up here on that side, the buttons and things, those are actually an overlay on top of what that wave file was. So when I put that in the header, everything just lines up perfectly. So playing around with, the, with centering on your backgrounds can um, actually kind of make you, allow you to do a lot of cool things when you've got complicated patterns that need to line up. Um, actually, the wave files are in a container div. So I've got a, a graphic on the background that we used. Um, we didn't use a fixed footer. So the footer's a different color, right? So I've got the height on the footer. So we've got a background graphic on that. I've got a wrapper on that that's kind of like the content one so that can stretch with it. I've got another one sitting in that top part, which is the repeating waves. And then inside the page div, inside the header, I have this graphic that's got the shadow here, the Drupal Camp LA logo, as well as the shadows, um, as well as the buttons. The little, the little uh, boat thing, you had to kind of get tricky and float that guy. But even that, even that right there is not, um, it's not a PNG that's transparent with a, with a shadow on it. Because if I had done that, that file would have been about 160, 180K. Because I happen to like using noise, <laughs> and all these like gradients and, and grungy stuff on my Photoshop files, PNGs don't work for me very often because they just end up becoming huge files when I export them. So what I actually did was just know where it was going to line up when I had it in the comp, and then cut it out. So if you look at that, uh, of the boat file, you'll actually see the waves around it. And then when I positioned it, I just made sure that it lined up with the waves. If you get really picky actually on it, you'll notice that it doesn't even line up. This graphic here, this blue one, the sand on it, how you can see the boat through as if it's transparent, it's not, actually. I have the boat behind that, and I just it's one square JPEG that I, um, uh, that I exported out. And this very kind of carefully, because if you plan ahead, you can layer all these things so the end user never sees all the scenes, if, you, if it goes right. And you know a lot of times it doesn't, and you've got to tweak a little bit more, and we're seeing a pixel here, and we're seeing a pixel there. Um, but that's sort of, the, sort of the fun part for me, is actually figuring out how to get a crazy design into a page without just giving you know, one giant graphic. So it doesn't matter if you're on 800, well, obviously you can't even see the damn site on something like this. But if you're on a smaller browser or on a little thing, or if you're on, like I got a nice big fatty 24 inch iMac and I can stretch that sucker all the way to the corner and it doesn't stop. The design the feels flow on the whole screen. Let's go back to my keynote. Any more questions on that? You guys can stop me and ask me any questions during it if you have any. Yes? Do you guys use any kind of grid framework, like 960 or blueprinting all that? You know what? I mean, I've looked into it. I don't know how. There's a guy that's doing tomorrow that's doing a thing on, on 960. I don't know how he's going to do it. I mean, I'm, I, I, I want to go because Drupal doesn't really output like that. You know, that's, that's with the idea that you can... Um, that you, you, know, you, create, you create in HTML and CSS and then somebody plugs in the information into that versus we have to do it the other way around where we got to kind of like you know, strangle and tame the CSS to make it look like we want it to, to, want it to look. I do use a 960, you know, you can download those PSD files that have the little, the little grid things for you. I use that. That's how I kind of, that's my template for my opening up every Photoshop file when I start designing is that 960 because it's really great to have the columns there and start balancing things out. Any other questions on that? Okay, cool. Zen is 960. 960. It's kind of standard now. It's the, it's the common one. Some people are like, oh, no, 970. Sure, 970. Okay, we can go five more on the outside on that. Um, and it won't be long, actually, until we probably can go to 1020 or 1040, and, which will be dope. But then you get these really wide sites. Um, Dig is a really good example of, of, of like a kind of a design site that flows. You'll notice that they have an expanding 
uh, their page expands. I think it probably actually stops at about 960. But if you're on a wider browser, um, how fluid that design is um, to kind of let the content flow. It's, it's done great. All right, so you've got it done. You kind of got it in there. Um, you figured out how to get your design into the, into the page. It seems like it's working OK. Um, you ever, like, you know, when you put lights on a Christmas tree, and then you got to squint at it, and then you can see the holes? Um, it's the, sort of the same thing here, where you kind of have to, I, this is what I do, sort of glance around the page a little bit and sort of treat it as if you're a new user at it and clicking around and see what kind of pops out to your eye. And then when it does, you got to fix it, if you want to. Um, death in the details, I honestly believe that, yes, a pixel here and a pixel there make a difference. They really can. Now, maybe not one pixel, but usually it's around five. So looking at the space between where, um, you know, where, your, where your, H1, or your H2 title is and where the submit person is, is that even to where the next P tag is? Are you like 10 pixels and 10 pixels? Or are you kind of screwing with it a little bit where you've got a 25-pixel you know, uh, margin between those, but is it consistent through? Are all those things lining up? Looking at the spaces between the text is just as much, just as important as looking at between the spaces between the buttons and the, and the top. If you haven't uh, done it before, do a little Google search on like kind of like you know text layout and font layout, and uh, a little like light study on it can can really be helpful on how um, how to kind of consistently break down um, from your H1 down to your P tag on what your size is and the consistency and sizes of, of, your, of your tags and your subheads. Even when the user isn't thinking it, like, God, that, that H3 right there looks about two pixels smaller than it. it looks like a, that looks like 16 point, but I think I saw it 18 point on another page. They're not thinking that, but if you think in terms of communicating that, communicating um, visual cues to your, to your end user, um, all that stuff starts to add up and being consistent across the board as much as you can with, um, with your text and thereby your whole design. And, oh man, change. This seems so funny when I wrote it and you guys just aren't laughing. Is it just like, is it hot? <laughs> I, I really thought, I thought, this is kind of funny. This is funny. I'm not getting any laughs. I'm kind of feeling a little bad here. Sorry. Okay. It's just a fact and it's, you know, and it's supposed to be a fun part of the process, right? That, no, it's, it's usually not. Always just put that into what you're doing as when you're designing, you're going to have to change it. And sometimes you're going to have to change it because you just don't like the way it is. Sometimes you're going to have to change it because your client is going to um, want to change. The difference between the end comp for the LA Drupal site and what's there now there's quite a bit of difference. I was swapping colors around. That first graphic that we had, let's see, was it this one right here? It was orange, it was, it was red, uh, it was tan, and then I was kind of moving things around. You can't see it on here, but also thinking of visual cues on what you want to, to pop out to, um, to your user. If you want to pull up the side of it, since most people have a computer here. Like I use blue. Here, it's news. There's blue on the little, um, the little news icon here. There's blue on the tweet icon there. Oh, here's some news sort of thing. Also, the popping out here. Uh, so we have the logo, the featured speakers, and how that red connects there, as well as if you look further down on the sessions. Again, too, all oh, these things are kind of connected to the camp itself. Here's some information about the camp. Those are sort of subtle things, um, but I think they kind of help the, the user when they're scanning, which most of us do on web pages, begin to assimilate that information. And we're back to the keynote. Okay. All right, now how can I make it better? So you got it the last time. Um, recycle your goodies, hire PSDs and your CSS um, for the next project. So think ahead and what you can use again. I've you know, done quite a bit of themes now, um, especially on top of, of Zen. And there's, when we do like user sections, you know, those little, uh, all those little kind of you know, secondary tabs and things instead of going through, because they've got that weird, there's like that, that outside, let's see what there's the, there's the LI and then there's the A tag and then there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of crap. And one day it just took me a long time to find out and get through and correctly style how I wanted it, all those tags in there. I've got that in a nice little organized block 
in a CSS that I can copy and paste if I have to use it again in another art of sight instead of doing it all over again. So thinking in terms of if you're keeping your stuff organized, then going back and finding that can make it a little bit easier. And holy shit, I'm a genius. Everyone says, oh, yeah, I kind of screwed this up. I'll do that better next time. Oh, I screwed that up. I'll do, this. I'll do that better next time. But you did things right. So don't forget to like, look at what you did right and like, okay, I did that. that I kind of kicked butt on that one. Okay, that, that sucked. That was good over there. So you know, taking from what, you've, um, what you achieved and also using that for your next design and your next project. Because in every project, there's both. And lastly, sharing is caring. You can only do what you can do even if you're doing what others are doing. In other words, um, me giving you all this information is not somehow going to, like, oh, now they're going to be able to kind of do what I do. I'm so, I'm like scared about that. Not because, oh, I'm so great. Well, no, it just comes out of me. It doesn't matter. You know, if we all did the same Photoshop tutorial, everything would still look a little bit different. And that's cool, you know? So, and I think that that's a good thing. Sometimes we get scared, like, oh, I thought I got this really kind of way to kind of treat me, and I kind of throw that filter over there, or I use this tag over here. Uh, it's kind of like my secret. But then you can kind of give it out, and man, it just kind of comes back. So that's what I sort of wanted to end on. Hopefully that was helpful at all. Does anybody have any questions? Yes? Do you have any experience um, building, like, a theme based on, like, a color paper? I have. You know what? And they always change. You know, I mean, I've been trying to use that more and more. Um, I don't want to say I'm a sensual designer, but somehow that's what kind of like happens. It's sort of like moving. Um, I think that was one of my strengths early on, is color for me um, uh, is really important, you know, and really kind of toning everything right. So when I started to use a color picker, um, well, no, 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 I think it's actually, it's really helpful, but it never, I never seem to get the right colors. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean, like, uh, like building, like, a website that utilizes the color picker, so you can say, I want, like, you know, this to be this color, this to be this yeah. color, like, how, what was that what you're talking about? Yeah, and use it, but then I never go, because it's, I never, they never, oh, they'll have three of the colors I want, but they never seem to have, like, the right complimentary color, oh. which, you know, and it's, somehow it's weird, it's like, you have those pickers, you have those pickers here, you got five, and you're like, I like these three, can I throw this one in there, and you'll give me the fourth? And no, you know, they, like, they let you choose one, and then they give you four other ones. Well, screw you, then I'll come up with the other one. So, but sometimes, um, if, if that's not your strong suit, then absolutely using color palette and using that early on can really, 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 really be helpful. Particularly if you're coming off a photo, something the client gives you, you know, you can throw those in there, and it'll give you kind of a color scheme. Um, uh, that, you know, for somebody that's especially starting too, just because it kind of gives you some parameters, like, okay, I can only use these colors. And also makes it really easy in CSS, because then you're not like, what was that red over there? You know, you have the same colors all the way through. Yeah? Can you talk a little bit about the wireframe process and starting design um, when you have a trailer that you see content from the client? Oh, man. Yeah, that's just... Yeah, it's called Nightmare. <laughs> I Honestly, just like two weeks ago, an old friend of mine that I, I used to do work for years ago, um, you know, that was his sort of thing. He'd get an idea, and he's like, five minutes later, he's like, let's build the site. And uh, so you start building. So, all right, you know, you're paying me an hourly wage. I'll build the site. So you start building the site invariably. Change, 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 change. And so when, and I, we haven't worked together for quite a few years, and he asked me to do some stuff for him. I said, we're going to, we need to wireframe this out. We're going to wireframe this and lock this down before we do anything. And I stressed that to him and sent off, you know, he kind of gave me some content. You know, I had to help him out a little bit on that. Um, and then sent it back to him. They did some changes. Yeah, we got the wireframe. The last comp looked nothing like the wireframe. And he hated it. And he hated it because he didn't know what he wanted in his head. So that's the other balance, too. You know, if we have experience, especially with clients that aren't in the web business at all, it's not just, you know, making good designs. It's helping them with our experience, knowing um, what kind of content they should, they should sort of have. You know, a client that comes to you and says, well, I really want my about paragraph on my homepage. You know, and then you just ask them, well, would you read 600 words on a homepage? No. Well, then don't, don't put 600 words on your homepage. We'll put it over here instead. You know. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, 
our first time related to change. Suppose you have a very good uh, Google website there. Uh -huh. And your plan says, it's all good, but now I want uh, my site header and footer added. Okay. The site that you're always there. So, okay. how do you deal with that? Well, I guess it would depend on the construction of how this, um, well, footer. Oh, because you. The, well, I'm confused. So, there, isn't there a header already on the page? Or? So, there's already a header. Okay. So, to give a more realistic example, let's say UCI decided to put their header saying it's sponsored by UCI. So, Google does that. Okay. And so, how do you do Oh, on, on, on Google Camp LA. On Google Camp LA. Um, first, I would be really angry. <laughs> uh, and then I would, I would honestly, I'm going to be honest, I'd totally fight it. Absolutely. Um, and then, uh, it depends like how much money they were doing, if they were going to pull the plug and we had to do it. Um, then try my, well, it depends. I mean, there's a, if they want a big old header, then I would then probably just push the whole page down and um, make it so it kind of stuff like maybe a banner ad at the top, but that's not the same sort of thing because it's not, if it's your clients, it's not, I wasn't, we aren't doing a site for UC Irvine, we're doing it for Google Plus LA. If they came in and they said, we want this big header there, sometimes you just got to do it, man. And it's going to look like ass, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, I mean, you can kind of push a little bit. It can be cool in the beginning. You can throw a little bit of a tantrum. And if they're paying the check, yeah, you got to throw your hands up in the air and just say, all right, cool. You know, it hurts my soul. And you're killing me. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, every designer is going to have lots of stories like that. It's just, it sucks, man. But actually, there's so much better, there's so much other good stuff about being a designer, so. Anybody else? What tools do you use? What tools are you? Um, I use kind of the basic ones. You know, everyone, everyone uses um, big Photoshop and Illustrator, the most. Oh, that was one of the things I did want to talk about. I think I was going to headline that. Um, using smart objects, that was another way. I think I had that in the notes, but I had forgotten. I was going to throw that out there really fast. And a way to kind of keep your, your site or keep your design um, and so you can be structuring it. I don't know if you have looked at smart objects or not. There's sort of little things that you can either, well, you can pull in from, uh, from other Photoshop files or from Illustrator, and they sort of like allow you to edit them outside. So these are great for buttons, let's say. Let's say you have to do a comp or five pages of a of comp, and you've got all these little, you know, all, all this sort of same buttons. Instead of having, you know, 40 instances of the same button, you can have one when the client comes back and says, oh, I want it blue, or you go, oh, wow, I really want it green, then you can change one instance and it goes boom, down on the page like that. So if you do a lot of design, there's just something that you um, So Photoshop, Illustrator, um, and a pad and paper and sketching and stuff. And then for wireframes, I use InDesign, but then that comes from my design background. So I'm familiar with that program. Um, but it's kind of, it's sort of a little counterintuitive. It's sort of pain to do text and stuff. Because uh, you gotta do text blocks. You can't just like, you know, like in Illustrator, you can put the type tool down and start text. Uh, but I like the way it outputs the PDF files uh, for clients. Um, I like, I can already have sort of a template set up. So I've got a, our header, Got our like you know a title page and a footer at the bottom, so everything's sort of marked with this by them. Um, and also on the master pages, it's really easy to kind of create a header and then a footer. They're going to be on every page, and then they don't have to change it once when they come back. And they go, oh, actually, we want this in the menu now. Can we pull that out? What's your the I don't have it on the computer. <laughs> that was one of the things I just realized that. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. You, you guys can email me. Actually, Scotty? Yeah. Yeah, sure. In the back, you don't even see it here, but you've got the really dark brown background. Yeah. How and why? The top? Yeah, it is. On the bottom, too, you mean? Okay. Uh, it's depth. So here, also coming back through, we can see. Um, always trying to trick the eye a little bit and have the page sort of like move. So. I mean, this isn't a drop shadow. This is just a solid, straight line underneath each of these sections. You'll see they look kind of like drop shadows, and they give a little bit of depth to each of these boxes, but they're not drop shadows. So the cool thing is, you're not dealing with gradients. You're not dealing with anything that has to lay over this sort of complicated pattern. You just use a straight line, actually, in the CSS, under each of these block pins. And uh, there we go. We got a little drop shadow. 
Um, up here, when I kind of did the graphics on the, on the waves and stuff, there's a little bit of a drop shadow. And just to kind of think, how to pull the page out a little bit, just sort of push it this way, push it that way. Um, but that's how I, you know, I guess that's how my designs sort of end up. Some designers, when they do really great, super clean stuff, um, you can go that route and do it very successfully. Um, even then, though, they're, you know, the ones that are good, you'll see that it's a lot of white stuff. Don't you think you have to cram everything into that little thing. Let your letting between your lines breathe a little bit. Don't be afraid to like to let your user scroll a little bit. That everything has to be kind of cramped up and all tight. Um, that's a good example of that. Uh, a list of part actually is a really nice page, and they've got lots of links, different places like that. And any of your CSS got kind of you know, best of galleries. A lot of times they'll have these really kind of super cool sites, and you can look at some of the photography on that. Any other questions? No? Okay, well, thank you very much. I hope to bore you. Uh, I'm around if you have any other like, specific questions. I apologize for not having um, more of the visuals being the design guy. Um, and uh, have a great rest of the day.